right. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to The Way Online. We are live from The Way this morning, and we just want to welcome all of you that have joined us online. Listen, we are getting ready to have a great opportunity to worship God all over this region. We have uh, easily several hundred members that are spread out over 25 cities in the Bay Area. And so this is a great opportunity for us to literally hold down our part of the Bay Area and let the praises of God, the worship of God, the fellowship uh, in the Holy Spirit to just saturate this whole region. So just take a few moments and get yourself in a posture of prayer, a posture of praise, a posture of worship. Take a few moments, if you're online right now, to share this stream on your Facebook page. We have Pastor Tanisha and Minister Wayne. They are holding it down, and they're going to be our live talk back audience today. So if you got a hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord, put it in the comments. Pastor Erna is also uh, holding down our YouTube page. And so we're going to have an interactive worship service for the next few moments just to give God the praise. So again, you can join us either on YouTube or on Facebook. Go live right now. Tell a friend, text somebody, tell them let's have a good time in the Lord today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will be in my mouth Get on your feet in your living room, in your bedroom. Shake off some of that sleep, and let's get ready to praise the Lord. Oh, Pastor Nisha, yeah. take us on in. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord, everybody. We are so glad to see you, so glad that you're here. So we just want to let you know this is going to be an interactive service, okay? We want you, if you are logged in right now, we want you to get in the comments. Come on, get in the comments and say, let's just do a, a roll call. Say who you are, say I'm here, hi, this is me. Come on, give us an emoji, give us a wave, give us some fire emojis. We just wanna see who's here, okay? And then also, throughout the time, we want you to uh, give us a praise report, give us some testimonies, okay? So come on, stand on your feet. We're gonna open with a word of prayer. And then we're going to get started. We're going to open with a quick scripture and a prayer. So let's turn it over to Brother Wayne. Yes, sir. Good morning, everybody. We're happy to have y'all. I'm going to um, lead us in scripture and prayer. Uh, today we're reading from Psalms 121. I'll read the entire scripture. Uh, the word of God says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day nor by moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps you, watches over you as he comes and go, both now and forevermore. Father God, we thank you just for another day, Lord. As we see everything that is going around us, going on around us, Lord, we still know that you are in control. So, Lord, we thank you just for being the Lord of Lord and the King of King, Lord. Thank you for our family that has joined us today. Thank you for allowing us to wake up in our right minds and still being able to come to this place to worship you, Lord. We want to be beacons of light. You told us in the word that we will be to be the salt and the light. So, Lord, we come here so that we may get everything we need, so that we may serve everybody we need to serve. Let us continue to be the kingdom, Lord, in these dire times. This is when we need to show up the most, and we can only do it by you. So we say, have your way, God. More of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take it away, Minister Mike. Come on. I'm ready to praise and magnify God. How about you? Come on, wherever you are, help me sing this. Come on, real easy song. Joy of the Lord. Come on, like 
no matter where we are. Hey, at this time, please log on to our comments. Do you have a praise report? Do you have some good news? Do you want to just say, hey, come on, put it in the comments as we're worshiping. 
just begin to let's fellowship with one another. If you see somebody on a comment you want to say hi to, go ahead and say hi to them. Remember, you can log on our Facebook page and also our YouTube page. So come on, family, as we continue to worship, come on, I want you to really get into this. Don't just be like we're just doing any old thing. Engage with God. Come on, begin to lift your hands and begin to engage in the spirit of God. Come on, Minister Mike. Hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, just like she said. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, how excellent is your name. There's nobody like the Lord today. Come on, let's sing this. Oh, Lord. Our Lord. How excellent is your name. Your name is strength, your name is power, a strong tower makes me safe. Come on, let me see you sing it. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name.
that when you all sing that. I love you, Lord, forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Come on, sing that. Oh, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. We worship forever. Come on, we worship. We worship forever. Yeah, so we want to just lift up. Thank you for everyone who's been making comments right now. And even in this moment, if you have a prayer request, can you begin to type that in the comments? And we're just going to start sharing and praying over these things. Uh, Minister Wayne, you could even grab a, a mic. And we could just start praying over people, um, just start making comments, any prayer requests that you have. Um, I just want to first start off with praying for, I know we have a couple of people in our congregation who are ill right now. We want to lift up. Uh, we have two Sister Rebecca's, Sister Rebecca Jansen, who is still in rehab, and she is recovering. She was hoping to be home by now, but she's still recovering. Lord, we just want to lift up Sister Rebecca. And then we also have Sister Rebecca Neal. We are praying for you, sister, for uh, your recovery, that God will just speak healing over you. Is there anyone else who would like to have um, any prayer requests, any comments? Just go ahead and put them in there. I'm just going to start praying over people as I see them in there. Thank you, God, for Brother Bill. We thank you for his sister, Shelby. Thank you for Sister Donna. I know we miss you so much, Sister Donna. We miss you and wish you were here. Thank you, God, for uh, Sister um, Lauren. Thank you, oh God, for Lisa. And we want to just give you praise for Kalis. How you doing, Kalis? We bless you. We lift you up, oh God, for Cynthia. Um, we thank you for Christina. We thank you, oh God. I, j I just want to lift up, man. It's, it's encouraging to see our family still come together in these times like this. 
Uh, I know a lot of people that don't have family that's coming together and still being community and being intentional about the way we serve in God and the times that we're supposed to serve God the most. Um, so I just want to lift up anybody that has family members that um, is truly affected by this um, by way of work. I mean, so many people are struggling financially. So many people are struggling with uh, food and with supplies and the way, you know, everybody is showing greed like, like never before. And so I just want to pray for especially our elders you know, that um, that are struggling in these times. So I would ask that we continue to be a beacon of light. Make sure we're looking out for our elders. And, and it might be your neighbor. It might not be your, your family, but it might be your neighbor or it might be just somebody, family member you know. But I want to continue to keep those people lifted up and make sure we're being intentional about serving our community. Yes, God. Lord, we just want to thank you for Sister Keisha's daughter, um, who have been fighting a cold, how you're just blessing her and how you're just um, moving in her body. Lord, we want to thank you for Sister Jamie and Sister Helen. Thank you for her praise report yes, of yes, 4,000 yes. meals served at Kennedy High. Yes. God, we just want to thank you for Sister Antoinette and Sister Tamar. How are you? And God bless Sister Janine and Sister Jenny. God, we thank you for Olivia. We thank you for Brittany and Roderick. God, we want to just lift up your people. God, you know where we are right now in a time of need, in a time of uncertainty, in a time of crisis. We know that you are a very present help yes, in a God. time of need. Yes, Come on, if you agree with that, can you lift yes, your hands yes, and God. say God is a present help? Yes, God. He's more than that. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. There's one thing he promised. He said he would never leave us or forsake yes, us. Can God. you lift your hands and just begin to feel the presence of God all around you and on you? Yes, yes. the presence of God can even be in your living room, even in your bedroom. Yes. The Lord is right there. For this church is a building, but yes, we yes, are the yes, church. Yes. So we're still connected. Oh, God, we thank you that you are a keeper. You are able to keep our souls. You're able to preserve us. You're able to give us joy unspeakable. God, we thank you that you, because of you, we have no fear. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we lift you. We want to thank you for this time of worship. We want to thank you for this time of prayer. Lord, we just give all these needs and these burdens to you, and we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Come on, keep your comments coming, and we're going to continue to interact with you. Come on, let's do a little bit, a little bit of that song right here. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Have your way. Here for you, Lord, desperate for more, hearts filled with praise, take over this place, have your way, hallelujah, come on, have your way, have your way, have your way, come on, back to the top, here for you, Lord, here for you, Lord, Desperate for more, hearts filled with praise, take over this place, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, I like this part right here. Somebody's desperate out there seeing that. We are, we are desperate. We are waiting for you, Lord. Have your way. Come on, sing that again. We are desperate. We are desperate. We are desperate. We are waiting for you, Lord. Have your way. Come on, some of you not feeling well. Come on, sing this. We Have your way, have your way, yeah. Have 
take command of your space. Have your way. Come on, have your way in my room, God. Have your way. Wherever you are, come on. Have your way. Come on, just invite God into your space. Have your way. Hey, have your way. Oh, Lord. I am desperate. I am waiting for you, Lord, to have your way. Come on, that means you have an open heart. Come on, say it. Rachel, who is praying for both of her grandmothers who are in nursing facilities. And Lord, we want to lift up everyone in nursing facilities right now who are closed off to loved ones, who can't have visitors, who are um, stuck in a place where uh, they might feel lonely and isolated. God, will you begin to walk down each room and, and begin to let your spirit be present in each nursing facilities. Lord, we lift up every worker who every nurse, every doctor, God, who are right in the thick of everything, will you continue to give them the strength that they need at this time? Will you continue to pour out your love and pour out your blessings? I don't know if you have anything, Brother Wayne. Yeah, I, I just, it's on my heart to continue to remind us <clears throat> that, that God is still present in this moment, and he's trying to uh, get our attention, you know. So um, one of my mentors and me was talking this morning about just being sure that we're always saying, God, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to be? What do you want me to do in this time? Um, Stand in that place of surrender, even though there's so much fear and chaos around us, just knowing that God is still in control and he still has something for us, a purpose for us in this moment. Yeah, I have a lot of prayer requests for our students who are in school, uh, who are not in school, that they don't fall behind. God, will you bless every child who this is a this is new for them they're not able to be at school and socialize and learn in in traditional ways but god will you increase their knowledge and their wisdom we pray over every parent who has been now given the task to homeschool their children lord that they might feel overwhelmed right now they might feel like they're not adequate for the job lord will you increase their strength and their wisdom god we pray that you would increase their patience God, lift your hands if you're a parent. God, increase the patience that you need to be at home with our kids. It's just amazing how in this time with this virus that is turning our hearts back to home. It's turning our hearts back to our kids, back to our families, back to our loved ones. So, God, will you bless and provide a system, provide a way where our kids will not fall behind. We pray that you would increase them and that they will not be deficient or deficit in anything. God, we want to just give you praise. We want to give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, as we lift up our hands and our hearts to you, I just want you right in your living room, in your bedroom, just lift your hands to God just for a few moments. God, we know that you are able to do anything but fail. And so, God, we hold the hands of our our family, our loved ones, even as we may be separated uh, by physical location. We know that in the spirit, Lord, we are one and we are together. And so, God, I pray even right now that you would allow us to feel the warmth of your embrace. Allow us, Lord God, to know that no weapon that forms against your people shall be able to prosper. And so we take this moment, we take this time just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that even in spite of all that is happening, we trust and believe that you are at work among us. 
We trust and believe, God, that you are doing something that we may not be able to see with our eyes yes, just yet, yes, but we know that all things will work together for the good to them who love you and are the called according to your purpose. So bless our families, God. Bless our children. Bless our communities. We lift up our loved ones who are incarcerated today. We dare not forget them. We lift up those who find themselves in the detention centers and in the camps at the border, Lord God. They are not forgotten. They are not erased from our minds. We intercede on their behalf even right now. God, we lift up all of those who are our medical professionals, who are our nurses and our doctors, who are on the front line without all the necessary materials. Have mercy, God. Have mercy on them and give them strength and encourage their heart and encourage their soul. We intercede on behalf of our government and our elected leaders, Lord God. All of the decisions that have not been made, that should have been made, all of those decisions that must be made. God, we ask you, Lord, to push and to move kings and to move, Lord God, systems to save lives. And, and God, even right now, we ask you to bless us, Lord. Bless us who have anxiety, who mental health issues are being triggered, whose hearts and minds are, are perplexed. I pray, God, even in the name of Jesus, you would send right now into their room, into their home, wherever they are, a powerful sense of your presence. So we lift up our hands to you and we pray. We trust and believe that you will do just what you said. We pray to you who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think and we'll say thank you God somebody say thank you God we thank you Lord and we bless you and we magnify you just take a few more minutes and just admire and thank God and give God praise and adoration open your mouth right where you are and just say Lord I thank you open your mouth right where you are and say Lord I bless you open your mouth right where you are and say God I believe Lord help my unbelief give me what I need and we'll say thank you in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, let's thank God right now. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the praise. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you. We extol your name right now. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy, Lord. Because you're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless everybody. Listen, I hope that you are experiencing the presence of the Lord. We feel God, we feel your worship and your praise that is being offered to God. Even here at the church, it's such a blessing to be able to know that even though we may not be physically together, we are spiritually connected and it is a blessing. So we're gonna take a few moments, to invite you to just take a second and just check in in the comments. We usually sing our Jesus in me, so we're going to do a little bit of that just for a few moments. And while we're checking in, uh, just tell, say praise the Lord to somebody. Give them a virtual hug. Find your favorite emoji and let them know that you are worshiping at the way at home. Come on, let's bless God.
about 60 or 70 folks who are on the Facebook page and another 50 or 60 on the, the YouTube page. So we are excited to be able to be worshiping with all of you, even in this moment right now. Take a few moments and just uh, invite some more folks, share on both the Facebook and the uh, YouTube, and let's invite more people to join us. It's not too late to be able to come and to experience the blessing of God in this moment. Oh, Let me just have everyone here, and, and of course, uh, our fellowship is strong because you have made worship a priority this morning. Listen, I know that uh, the, this week, these last couple weeks have been such a very difficult time for so many of us, but I believe that we can take this moment to imagine and experience God in a whole new way and the sweet fellowship of the community of the faith in a whole new way. And so let's take this moment to just lean into all that this season will teach us. I believe that every time uh, we have a, a season of the wilderness, God will teach us something in the wilderness that we would not have learned unless we went through it. But just be reminded on the other side of the wilderness, there is a great blessing and there is a great promise. Thank God for Lady Sharice as well. She's at home with the kids and we just want to give a great shout out to Lady Sharice and to all of our ministry staff and everybody. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now, we want to just make you uh, aware of a couple of quick announcements. Number one, we are indeed going to start having weekly uh, opportunities for worship that will continue to be online. 10 a.m. and so we invite you to keep showing up uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, you don't have to worry about a seat or a park for the next month or so. You have the best seat in the house and you have the best park. Somebody say amen, right? And so make sure that you don't allow any barriers to just put uh, you in an opportunity of fellowshipping with God and with God's people. Second thing we want to say on tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all through the week, our ministers and others are going to start uh, creating some space for some virtual prayer and devotional and inspirational messages. And so we're going to invite you to just be on the lookout. By the middle of the day, you'll find some of these messages uploaded to our YouTube page, to our Instagram TV page, and of course to our Facebook page. And I think it'll be a wonderful opportunity uh, for you to just get some inspiration along the week and along the way. Third thing I just want to mention, we are in the process of attempting to pull together some virtual learning opportunities for our children and families who are experiencing this season where you're not in school. And I've heard for so, from so many that uh, they uh, have now such a greater appreciation. I won't say they didn't have an appreciation, but they just have a greater, somebody say greater, a greater appreciation for the role of our teachers and our educators. Some of our teachers and educators are now willing to send us some uh, educational guidelines, some, some uh, syllabi, if you will, to help your children uh, have some structure in their learning. We're also hopefully gonna start creating a couple of hours a day for some virtual playtime. Uh, so our children can get some face time with their friends and with others and not uh, be uh, locked down in their home without any uh, uh, kind of space to learn and play and, and do some games together. And so uh, Pastor Tanisha and a few other folks, we're all gonna be working together to try to get that moving this week. So be on the lookout if you are an educator and you have some uh, curriculum that can be a help to us, please send that forward. Uh, if you are an educator and you'd like to help serve on this committee, please uh, put that in the comments and we'll get an opportunity uh, to, to keep that information or email us. We wanna start creating some space for our parents and kids to continue to have all the great support they need for our season of education. It's time to receive the gifts of the people of the way and so we're gonna invite you to take a few moments and. Uh, do what we know we must do even through this season of uh, us not meeting together physically. Uh, the Way already has a wonderful, wonderful giving platform that so many of you already use. You can go to thewayberkeley.com, right on your internet. Just type in thewayberkeley.com. I know you can uh, go to the internet 
internet because you're watching us on internet. Somebody say amen, right? And so go to thewayberkeley.com and you can actually give online and, and be able to be a blessing uh, to us. We want to maintain our giving. It is my commitment to all of our staff here at the church uh, that we will not uh, take anyone off of staff. We're going to hold on and, and meet all of our financial obligations because I know that you are going to continue to help us meet those obligations as well. And so even as we're going through a downturn, uh, I want you to just be as consistent as you can. I know some of us actually are seeing a decrease in our um, pay at work or we're being forced to take some vacation time. So you do what's in the best interest of you financially, but you can continue to give a little bit if you can, and that will be a great blessing to us in the name of the Lord. And because you have been faithful, I'm so blessed we have some reserves that we're going to be tapping into to maintain our uh, responsibilities here at The Way, so we are not in danger of missing a beat. But to sustain ourselves, we want and need our members particularly to continue to be very diligent in your giving in the name of the Lord. To behold you as my king, Lord, I want to be where you are. Where Amen. You God, are. we just want to thank you for this opportunity to come and uh, see how the word of God speaks to us. And we invite you to uh, give us a word that will remind us of your great love for us your great strength and power that sustains us. So bless the word that I and we will read from and preach and teach from. I pray that uh, your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy may rest upon me and even the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the way say amen. Amen. Uh, turn with me in your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Uh, verse 7. We are going to spend these few moments uh, working through this passage. I referred a little bit to it uh, when we were uh, doing some of our uh, uh, updates earlier this week, and, and I found this passage to be a very important passage that I think can at least position us uh, for this season that we are entering into. I certainly want to appreciate Pastor Tanisha who uh, held down our first virtual worship service last week. I wasn't feeling well and uh, it turned out I had bronchitis and the doctors uh, gave me some, some penicillin and helped me to get myself together. Uh, and and I, I, I do know that for many of us, uh, particularly who have underlying health conditions already, uh, we are facing perhaps some of our uh, worst fears and some of our biggest uh, kind of moments of, of, of crisis, of, of perhaps faith, and we're trying to figure out, God, where are you and what is being asked of us in this moment? This particular passage of scripture, I think, is a wonderful, wonderful, uh, amazing gift to us in this moment, and so I'm going to invite you uh, to allow 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 7, uh, be a blessing to you. Now, this letter is written by Paul. It is thought uh, to have been one of Paul's uh, letters to the church in Corinth. Corinth, uh, as you may or may not know, was one of the major cities of the Roman Empire back in that time. It was a major city with lots of commerce and, and very diverse, had all kinds of religious pluralism and all kinds of practices that were deeply cultural, but also uh, at odds at times with the Roman Empire, with the faith of some of the Christians there and other religions. So it was a very tense and tenuous space. Uh, and the church there that had been planted by Paul was actually attempting to try and figure out how can we live faithfully in this particular moment. And I do believe that those kinds of questions have always uh, been an interrogative space for any follower of Jesus through history who has to uh, reckon with what this moment is bringing to us and what our faith is asking or requiring of us. And so let's take a look then here at this passage. Uh, the Apostle Paul, as he always does, as one of the, the well-trained Jewish scholars of his day, is merging and melding in some of the, the, the Jewish literature, a holy sacred text around 
of Moses and the receiving of the law and how many of the early uh, uh, Jews had a veil over their face because, uh, or Moses had a veil over his face after he went and experienced uh, uh, God's presence on the mountain. Uh, his face was shining so bright in, uh, I think, the book of Exodus that they had to put a veil over his face. And, and that veil was so the, the Israelites could actually be in the presence of Moses. Can you imagine having such an encounter with God that you were lit up like that? I'm talking about lit up where, where, where folk got the, uh, you know, that soul glow kind of shine, you know, where, where you know, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's so bright that in order to be in the presence of other people, they have to literally put some kind of veil uh, to take the shine off. Uh, well, well part, of, part of what uh, Paul did with this particular example was translated to help uh, illuminate that there may be spiritual blindness that is at work among some of the people who are trying to reckon and reconcile with the reality of life and the promise of God's word. And so how do we deal with these contradictions? This is really, uh, I think, the crux of Paul's text today, and I think it is helpful for us. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it may appear on your screen, but the scripture says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay. Your, your version may say earthen vessels, uh, talking about our bodies. We have this treasure that is within our bodies to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Oh, these are some wonderful, wonderful verses. Uh, we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Think about that. We're carrying around within our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. That the death and the life, the work is happening at the same time. Lord, have mercy. Uh, for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Verse number 18, let's hop down. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though inwardly we are wasting away, yet I'm sorry, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an external glory that far outweighs them all. Verse 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen? Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So uh, we're going to just preach from a, a, a quick topic. We have limits. We have limits. And that may be the most obvious Amen. The most obvious declaration we've made this week, we have limits. Now, one of the greatest struggles as we endure this pandemic will be reconciling the contentious relationship we will have with our faith on the one hand and our circumstances on the other. For many of us, this pandemic will activate some of our worst fears. For others, it will trigger and cause us to struggle with disappointments and loss. Uh, we who may be prone to exhibit anger towards the failed leadership of our elected leaders and the systems that continue to fail us, all kinds of emotions rightly are going to surface for us during this time. And I hope we also make space for compassion and the appreciation 
of all of the frontline health workers who are laboring to serve and assist in our healing and recovery. Whatever your feelings or your experiences, as you are experiencing them, it is indeed important to be in touch with all of those feelings and create the space and the grace that is afforded to us to deeply interrogate them, to not allow your uh, humanity, your feelings to, to be erased or to be trivialized, but to, but to interrogate them and to, and to go through that process because we know that God's spirit is there right along with us, helping us to do several things. Learn from the wisdom of our past that we are not a people that has not gained wisdom from our past. We have the spirit there that is able to help us lean into this current situation with fear and with confidence, uh, without fear and with confidence that God will be faithful to us. And we have the opportunity to look to the future with both hope and possibility. So learn from the past, lean into our current situation, and look to the future. Just say that with me, learn from the past, lean into this current moment, and look to the future. Yes, learning, leaning, and looking. I want that to be one of the frames by which you go through this week. What can I learn from my and our past as a people whose God has never let us down? And what can I do to lean into the possibilities of this moment, knowing that I have to do some work to interrogate some of my worst fears, but I also have an opportunity to be open to some divine surprises? And how can I keep looking to the future knowing that uh, this situation won't last always. Now, the process of learning and leaning and looking will always be complicated by both the limitations of our humanity and the transcendent power of our faith that exists together at the same time. I'm going to say that again. We will always face the limitations of our humanity. But we must remind ourselves that it also sits right alongside the transcendent power of God's faith that is with us every day, every moment, every second. As a follower of Jesus, we will constantly find ourselves, particularly in moments of crisis, wrestling with what we see with our eyes. And what our faith is compelling us to believe. If you're like me through the years, I've often asked God, if I'm being a follower of you that is faithful, must I lie to myself? I've asked God that sometimes. Must I ignore the deep pain and, and, and the fears and the disappointments that I'm experiencing in order to be faithful to you? And we hear folks oftentimes just, you know, giving us those cliches all the time. I'm, I'm just blessed and highly favored. Or you can't never really question or ask God any, any real hard uh, questions in moments of great trial. But when I look at the scripture and see the fullest expression of Jesus, us. It reminds us that the very existence of Jesus on this planet was the epitome of this tug of war. That Jesus, as we believe the orthodoxy of, of our Christian faith, was fully human and fully divine. That Jesus, in order to come and, and, and perform his divine purpose to bring salvation to the world, to the universe, to redeem creation, that Jesus was forced to live within certain limits of humanity while knowing he possessed the transcendent power to be limitless. Think about that. Jesus came from an eternal place of power to become human in Jesus as we say the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily that means that all you can fit of God in a human body you found it in Jesus 
And that that power that was in Jesus made Jesus fully aware that even though I'm limited in my human body, I also have limitless power. Jesus' humanity lived in harmony with his transcendent nature. This is good news for us right along through here. Many of us who are having to adjust to a new set of limits while holding on to the transcendent power and faith that may not always line up with what we are experiencing. It's good news to us that Jesus, he in his own jar of clay, as the scripture says, Jesus inhabited a jar of clay, meaning that Jesus as a human being got hungry. Jesus must have got tired. And we see it a few times, Jesus is tired while everybody else is awake. That means if you caught Jesus on a bad day, Jesus would be like, man, don't mess with me. I'm taking a nap. Man, I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not trying to do too much right now. Hey amen. I'm, 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 I'm launching the nap ministry today. Somebody say amen, right? And so, so Jesus got hungry. He got tired. Jesus got angry. We see that the, 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 the humanity of Jesus uh, allowed him to experience anger and, 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 and frustration at the elected leaders of his day, the political leaders, the religious leaders, that Jesus also had the capacity in his humanity to have compassion. He went to dinners. He went to parties. He, he, went, he, he may have been even uh, 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 with D-Nice last night. Amen. I think everybody was in the club with D-Nice club quarantine last night. Jesus would have been there hanging out because Jesus in his humanity was experiencing the full gamut of his emotions. But it's important to appreciate that right alongside Jesus' humanity sat Jesus' divinity. And it did not make his faithfulness to God diminished. And this is a very important point. It's actually my first point that I want you to think about, that our limitations that we have require us not to deny our humanity. That, 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 that's the first point. Just say that. Don't deny my humanity. This gift of not denying our humanity is critical. Verse 4, uh, verse 7 says that we have treasure in jars of clay. We have a treasure in earthen vessels, which means that there is a treasure that is divine, that comes from uh, outside of us, but the treasure is able to be held by our jar of clay our humanity that the limitations of the jar of clay of our humanity as we go through this process should not be diminished for the sake of this treasure we have lord have mercy so it, it is saying make space for your humanity attend to your humanity Listen to what your humanity is speaking and telling you at this time. Because this jar of clay is a gift from God for you and I to steward. You taking care of yourself in this moment is not a denial of your faith. It is you being faithful to the gift that is your jar of clay. As we did our surveys this week for our congregation. And I want to thank all uh, a couple hundred of you that, that opened up the email and, and, and many took the survey. We, we were able to e experience some important information that reminded us uh, about the, the ways in which our jars of clay, our humanity, are either being impacted by this moment or already have underlying health conditions. About 30% of our congregation, just through the survey, uh, identified underlying conditions that make us vulnerable to this current illness. And, and, and we hear some folk out here ignoring the advice to practice social distancing. I even read some of my woke loved ones who are convinced that this is some virus that, that has been engineered uh, to, to take our rights away and, 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 and to, to, to wipe out certain folks from the planet. I'm here to tell you that nobody can control a virus. 
Amen. And then so I would never put it past folk to 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 manipulate and use the crisis of a, a, a moment uh, for their gain. But it's important to appreciate that our humanity inherently is always vulnerable because that's what it means to be human. Practicing social distancing and taking precautions is not a lack of faith. You being at home instead of being here in church is not a lack of faith. As a matter of fact, because this moment requires us to take care of ourselves and one another, our jars of clays, our human limitations as we are experiencing them are a gift from God to remind us, listen, that you are not God. That we are not God. That I am not God. That the one gift of having limits teaches us is that we are indeed human. I know for many of you that's quite a revelation. Because some of you just think it all begins and starts with you. But I want you to just tell your neighbor in the chat, just type in there, you are not God. It's all right. Just type it in there. Tell them you are not God. You are not God. We are humans. We have limitations. And this opportunity is allowing us to be reminded of the precariousness of life. And these limits help us to appreciate the many kind of limits that we've already, for good or for bad, have adjusted to, even before this crisis started. Many of us, if we're honest, we can acknowledge that we live within limits every day before coronavirus happened. We've adjusted to these limits. We've moved around within these limits. At times, we've bumped up against these limits. Some of our limits have been imposed by human hierarchy and difference-based bias. Some of our limits are due to geography and the times in which we've been born into. Some of our limits are imposed upon us unjustly, and some are self-imposed through our own agency. But make no mistake about it, there is always a tension to both live within our limits while pushing the boundaries of our limits as we experience the complexity of human life and daily struggle. So limits remind us of our humanity. Limits remind us that we are radically contingent that we are not self-made human beings. That regardless of how much money you have, regardless of what your last name is, you need to remind yourself that I, we have limits. Limits remind us of the importance of relationships. And those relationships matter. Limits have taught us that it matters who's in the White House. Limits taught us that it matters Who is running the CDC? It matters who's the governor. It matters who's the mayor. So these limits hopefully are teaching us that you better be registered to vote. (laughs) So we can can make sure that the limitations of our humanity are not misused, abused, or mishandled by those who are at their root not prepared to handle the tenderness and the sacredness of of our limits. So taking care then of our jars of clay, being a good steward of your body, of our society is exactly what Jesus is asking us to do in this moment. Honor these limits, not as a sign where you lack faith, but as an expression of our faith. So that means if you're sick, guess what? You got to take some medicine. That means if you aren't feeling well, you have to follow the instructions of your doctor. If your mental health uh, circumstance or, or other things are being triggered, that means that you need to seek out some therapeutic support. Uh, make sure your medication and your, your hormone levels and other things, your chemical balances are, are right. Pay attention to the limits of your humanity. That means, again, you got to learn your history. Some of us who have underlying conditions know that we come from a history of families that have some of these conditions. So what does it mean to learn your family history? In our family, we have always had asthma. And so I knew and I've known that I have to take good care of my breathing. Me not taking my puff puff when I need it. I I have a different puff puff pass. 
Amen, amen. I got a different puff, puff pass, and it's, it's called albuterol, and it's, it's called Qzar. Somebody say amen. And I thank God that I got what I need to take care. Can you imagine if when I'm having an asthma attack, I don't take my medicine because I'm trying to say I got faith? No, I got faith to take my medicine. Somebody say amen, right? And so while you're in this crisis moment, don't manipulate the use of faith to dishonor the limits of our humanity. If you're angry, process your anger in healthy ways. It is such a sad uh, thing that many of our domestic violence hotlines are reporting a surge in in, in intimate partner violence because people who may have seen their work schedule uh, as a reprieve from close quarter living with abusers now are forced to spend more hours a day. It's sad that many of our children who are at home now are, are more likely to have to experience a certain kind of engagement that some may think is disciplined, but it, it, it borders on, on a form of physical and emotional abuse. So even while you're experiencing anger and frustration, what are other ways to process through that and not take it out on the ones who've been called to love? That is about the limits that you are honoring in this moment. Whatever you do, don't ignore your humanity and succumb to the unhealthy ways that this jar of clay, this body, this, this body that has been given to us as a gift, don't ignore the ways we are called to steward it in this moment. Go take a walk. Go, go get some physical exercise. Go look outside at nighttime at the stars. If you need to go outside and just holler for a little while at the top of your lungs and get some, some of your frustrations out, do it, but cause no harm to another person. Honor the limits of your humanity. But then I just want you to appreciate the second point that, that is important, that even in this moment, you and I are called to acknowledge that because our humanity sits right along with the supernatural transcendent power of God within us, that we also have limits as well, thanks to the Spirit. That the Spirit allows you and I not to miss the brightness. Uh, just say that uh, to, to the person in your chat. Don't miss the brightness that, that is getting ready to shine as I, as I realize the limits that the Spirit are putting, the boundaries the Spirit are putting together. I love how Paul illuminates the ways by how the presence of God's Spirit in our lives place a limit on the reality and impact of our suffering and trial. That Paul, he powerfully says it like this. We have been surrounded and battered by troubles, but, everybody say but, we're not demoralized. You got a limit there. That you may be surrounded and battered by trial, but you won't be demoralized by it. Oh, uh, you got a limit. Uh, you, 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 you may not know what to do, as Paul says, but you got a limit. God knows what to do. You, you, you may be spiritually terrorized, Paul says, but God hasn't left your side. You may be thrown down to the ground, but even when you're thrown down, the impact of you being thrown down has a limit. It won't break you. Think about the limits that God has put in place by being connected to the spirit that even in my humanity, I may have trouble, I may have trial, but I know that that limit by being connected to the spirit means I can only go so far. I don't know if you ever, you know, growing up, you know, in a neighborhood, we, 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 would, we would, you know, drive by a uh, 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 a uh, 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 junkyard, a junkyard, and, and it was, a, it was a, a junkyard that had all kind of crazy stuff in there. We used to love going and play and, and stuff like that. And so when I started to drive my own car and I had to start paying for my own uh, uh, car repairs, you know, I had to get a new starter. I had, I had to get some, 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 new, some new tires. Uh, you know, I, I had to get a doorknob on, on my door. And, 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 and the mechanic would say, uh, you know, Mike, this is going to cost about three $400. I said, for a door handle? Yeah, three $400. But if you go to the junkyard, 
You can get it for $25. I said, $25, all right. Well, just point the junkyard to, uh, to me. And so I go into the junkyard, and I'm looking around, and, and there would be this crazy dog. This crazy dog that, that would just be, you know, and I walk, you know, I'm, I grew up scared of dogs. And, I, you know, even to this day, I don't, I'm, I got an agreement with dogs. You stay over there, and I'll stay over here, and we won't have no problems, amen. Because, you know, the kind of dogs I grew up around, they weren't, you know, house pets, amen. They, 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 they were uh, home defense systems. Somebody say amen. Uh-huh. And so, 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 you know, this is one of these junkyard dogs, that, as you, you would call it. But, 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 you know, before I got familiar with the junkyard, I would walk into the junkyard, and I would see this dog, and I would kind of get a little nervous, and then the dog would start growling, and the dog would start running towards me, and all of a sudden, the dog would just start going like that. And go back to the thing. And I, so, so, so then, you know, the second time, you know, I, I was like, man, if I see this dog again, I'm going to run the other way. Uh, and then the dog would start running to me, and then it would just get, get stuck back like that. And then, then after a while, I realized that, the, the owner had put this dog on a leash, and the dog was chained to a pole, which meant that no matter how far the dog wanted to run, the leash would not let the dog go so far. I'm here to tell you, God has you on a Holy Ghost leash. And no matter what happens to you, no matter how far you start to fall, no matter how the circumstance starts to hit you, God won't let you fall but so far. You have a spiritual limit that God has placed. And God is saying that even though you may have to endure this hardship I have placed a limit through the power of my spirit, and it will keep you from falling. It'll keep you so you won't be broken. And I know that for many of us, we need to describe our faith in ways that try to take in account for this spiritual transcendent power that is within us. But understand, Scripture does not describe faith in ways that erase our humanity. Uh, but Scripture describes faith as something that is compatible with our jars of clay. That God's transcendent power can live in compatibility with these jars of clay. And as they did with Jesus, the power of God and the jar of clay are living together inside of us with mutual interdependent limitations. I wish I could preach this thing uh, in a whole different kind of way, but my time is leaving me. At times, just like Jesus, the transcendent power will break through and it'll perform a miracle. It'll remind you and I that there's more going on inside of you than you can see with your naked eye. That God will use a miracle as an expression of the transcendent power of God that's within you. It is my assertion that miracles are rare because a miracle intends to point us to God's mastery over creation. While not erasing that same creation. God's miraculous power is never intended to erase our humanity. Rather, it is intended to expose God's transcendent power in relationship to our humanity. And since God is working the miracle, how many of you know only God gets to decide when that transcendent power pushes its way through these crack pots of our lives? Lord, have mercy. And, and, and so in the absence of miracles, you and I are called to live faithfully and steward creation and one another. That's why I like to say social distancing is an act of Christian stewardship pending your miracle. Lord, have mercy. You ought to just say that social distancing is an act of Christian stewardship pending my miracle. That's why even while I'm social distancing, every day I can wake up and say, I'm looking for a miracle that I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I can see with my eyes 
the invisible, that the sky is the limit to what I can have. That if I believe and receive it, God will perform it as the clock says to say, today, today, today. Lord have mercy. You ought to just type in those comments. I'm looking for a miracle today. I'm looking for a miracle in this moment. Every day I wake up, these jars of clay are looking for miracles. And it is carrying around the transcendent power of God, sustaining me until the miracle happens. Keep the faith, child of God, then is my final point to you and I. As the scripture says so powerfully, we do not fix our eyes on what is seen. I love how the message says it, so we're not giving up. Just say, I'm not going to give up. How could we, even though on the outside, life looks like things are falling apart on us, but on the inside, God is making everything new. Don't give up. Keep the faith in this moment because God is doing something new. It is indeed a fact, child of God, that this moment is not fixed. Dare I even say how we will be changed in this moment is not fixed. That it is an open opportunity. While you have this time to gather in home and place and space, could it be that God wants to invite you and I to a new level of depth with God and with self and with family? Could it be that God wants you to begin to attend to those parts of your life, your human parts, that need a new rhythm that is not dependent on the rigor and the exploitation of capitalistic living. Could it be that God is trying to help you give your humanity the stewardship it requires, all the while taking some time to tap into that transcendent power of God? How do you do it? Well, this is a good time to dust off your consecration Uh, guidelines around the disciplines of abstinence and engagement. There may be some things you need to abstain from in this season. This is a good time to reset some of our diets because this virus is showing us that it attaches to mucus and, and, and the kind of foods that you eat in your body make you more susceptible to the virus. So what does it mean then to say that I'm gonna take this moment to not grow in the wrong way by eating unhealthy, but I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to engage in more prayer. I'm going to engage in more exercise. I'm going to engage in more therapy and breathing, and I'm going to do the things that help me keep the faith so my eyes cannot be limited by what I see in this moment. But I can indeed be open to all the great possibilities that are to come. We have limits But these limits, they are a gift from God. These limits in your humanity remind you and I of our deep need for God and for one another. And these limits imposed, thankfully, by the Spirit remind us that even when we're in trouble, that we don't have to see ourselves in despair. I pray today that as we move through this season of quarantine and lockdown, of in shelter, space and place, that we also see this as an opportunity to grow in another different way. As we are going through this season, I invite you to invite the spirit to speak to your heart right now and give you some sense of clarity and a sense of possibility, a sense of of healing and wholeness that only God can bring. Take a moment to invite the Spirit of God to to remind you with the breath and the word of life, to give you a message of love, to, to, to give you what you need in this moment. Invite the Spirit of God to speak to you in a powerful way. 
Those who song says, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning, so dark nights will fade away. Oh, speak to my heart. God, we ask you right now, right where you are. God, I pray that you will bless my loved one who is listening, the dealing with, Lord God, the, the great tension of our humanity and the supernatural power that exists together. This moment, God, is trying someone's faith. It's trying their ability to see you and to find you in this moment. But I pray that even right now they will Find your presence, the presence of your transcendent power, and may it stand up within them. May it, Lord God, help them to boldly and confidently attend to their humanity, the limitations of their health, the limitations of their mind, the limitations of their circumstance. May these limitations be seen not as a curse per se, but as an opportunity then for your transcendent power to stand up within them. May they know, God, that they can exist together and it is not a crisis of their faith. It is the reality of their faith. It is the definition of their faith that their doubt may indeed confirm that which they believe. And so as we entertain, Lord God, in the weeks to come, some of our worst fears, God, may we also experience some of our highest hopes. As we have to go through some sickness and illness, may we also experience the power of healing and recovery. And God, even as our families are discovering a new normal, may we always know that the rhythms of your spirit sustain us in every time and every moment. And we'll say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you that we have limits. And the limits of your spirit, they keep us from being broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, and let's thank God together. Let's thank God together. Speak to my heart. This is our prayer. Speak to my heart. Say it again. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. God bless you, people of the way. What a great time. What a great blessing it has been to spend with you this morning. I just want you to know that this is a season for our growth and not our diminishing. And so please take a great opportunity to let the word of God, the promises of God, the history of God's faithfulness, learn it, hold on to it so you can lean into this moment and so you can keep looking to a future that is good, that will cause us to recover. We love you with the love of the Lord. We pray that you experience another week of God's faithfulness we ask you to keep our church in prayer, keep families in prayer. This week, make sure in the chat box you find some folk and you commit that I'm going to be in a belong circle with you. I'm going to be in a prayer uh, 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 group with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure we're connecting beyond this uh, limitation of my home, per se. But I'm going to expect the spirit of God that is within us to connect us on a deeper level. Pastor Nisha, you want to say anything before we, we, we roll on out? Yes, I do want to say all of our Yana kids and parents, don't forget there are resources for you. Just because we're in this time of social distancing does not mean that our kids cannot continue to grow in their faith. So go on our website, look under Grow, click on Youth and Young Adults, and you'll see lots of resources for our kids to, um, for them to grow at home. Absolutely. Minister Wayne, any, any highlights? We have men, some men stuff, some community stuff happening coming up. Uh, yeah, we just want to um, invite the brothers tomorrow. We will be um, pulling together a Zoom call. 
Um, and we just want to come together and check in on each other and um, end our last time of our Belong Circle. And if you are part of Belong Circles, I know Sister Florence is definitely on the stream. Thank God for your ministry and your work. Uh, Pastor Erna uh, is definitely on the stream. Thank God for their ministry and work. Get connected to a Belong Circle, a small group this week, and let's stay connected. Now, some of you that have filled out the survey, we have seen your comments. Some of you are asking for some care packages to be delivered, uh, some toiletries, some things of that nature. So we promise within the next 48 hours, we are going to get some of that delivered to you. The great blessing of you uh, filling out these uh, 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 surveys for us is now we know uh, your proximity to us. Like I said, we had on our list about 400 and so members uh, of our church that live in 26, no, what I say, 46. 46. 46 Bay Area cities represented in our church. I mean, that just blew my mind. Uh, it just means that, you know, some folks are traveling maybe as far as an hour and a half. So we have some folk all the way up in the Santa Cruz area. It's Brother, Brother Robert. Hey, Amen. Man. Robert. And coming all the way from Santa Cruz. And we got sure. some folks who live as far as Modesto and yeah. folks who are living as far as Saratoga and San Jose. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we can connect with you in person if you need help. And we can be connected to you uh, to support you if you have underlying health conditions. We are here to serve even in this season. And uh, I look forward to the ways in which we as a church can be together while we may not be physically together. We love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed. Stay strong. God, as we leave this service, this fellowship online, I pray that you will remind us of our connectedness one to another. I pray, God, that your faithfulness will continue to manifest and we will remind ourselves that, Lord, the limits we have are gifts and not curses and they can indeed create space for the great power that lives within us to shine through. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the way say amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week at 10 a.m. Yeah. God bless. Speak to my heart.